Good morning and welcome to Morning Moment Message. And uh, I'm, I release these on Fridays. You see several of them that I've done before. And uh, just a, a little message that I do on Fridays. Today, I'd like to talk about spiritual temperature. Now, as a nurse, as a retired nurse, I can tell you a lot about taking temperatures. More than you probably want to know. Thermometers, you could put them under your tongue. You could put a rectal thermometer where it needs to go to, to take a temperature. And there and there was limited things you could do with taking a temperature. Now, uh, you know, they they could take your temperature in your forehead and your your ear and, and uh, uh, they, they can monitor it in so many different ways. And uh, now they could just wave something over your forehead. And it's the technology is just amazing how we could take the temperature and how we could tell what your what your temperature is. Today, I'd like to talk about spiritual temperature. What's your spiritual temperature? I'd like to just do a three quick three points message about your spiritual temperature and talk about the different ways that, that, that it could go. You could be too cold and your temperature could be low. In spiritual temperature, it's, it's icy cold. And I, I want to share a few scriptures with you as I, as I, as I share uh, this message. Matthew 24, 12 tells us because, because of people's breaking the law and sin being everywhere, the love in their hearts of many will become cold. Now, there's a lot of cold-hearted people, in spiritually speaking, around today. That's our nature, to be cold. Uh, we are born with a sin nature, and and uh, there's within us that coldness that that if not broken can continue to, to all of our life now there are some kindness and things that happens from nurturing and parents and people teaching good moral teaching but but there's a coldness in man every day in the news you hear somebody that that has shot somebody or done something or and you think how cold can they be and sometimes when i when i see things that are done and i and i get angry and upset that that things are done to me or said about me and i look at that and i go wow how could they do that and, and i remember saying this says you can't expect anything but sin from a sinner sinner and so i realized there is a coldness in people's hearts and I've been around some cold people before. And you can see the extreme coldness of people. And you go, yeah, I, I see that. And, and God can change that. God can take the most cold-hearted sinner and the, and the person who just doesn't seem to care about anybody else. God can take that cold heart and give you a brand new start. And, and he's done that with so many people. So there's that cold heartedness. There's another temperature. It's, it's called lukewarm. A spiritual temperature. Where, where we're miserably lukewarm. Now this is where the parallel from our physical and our spiritual temperature really falls apart. So stay with me. In the physical, it's good to have a normal temperature, not too cold and not too hot, but be normal. What's your normal temperature? Spiritually, it, it's not real good to be lukewarm. That's a, called miserable lukewarm. Let me share a scripture. Revelations, the third chapter, the 15th and 16th verse says, you are either cold or hot. How I would rather you be one or the other. So because you are neither cold or hot, but lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. Lukewarm. 
You know, growing up in a pastor's home and growing up in church, uh, I've heard that scripture talk about being lukewarm. And I remember when I was a child, I asked my dad, well, what does it mean to be lukewarm, dad? What's the, what's the thing with the scripture? And my dad is always a great, great with object lessons. And this is where I got my, my, th- my, my, uh, desire for object lessons from i remember as a child he says just come here let me and he brought me over to the sink got a cup and he held his hand to the faucet until the water was just lukewarm he filled the cup up and he says here drink this so i started drinking it i go oh it's terrible he says that's what god thinks of you not being either on fire for me, cold or hot. It's just miserable really being lukewarm. What a great lesson he gave me. There are some Christians and there are some people in churches that are miserable. And they're causing the worst trouble and the worst problems around in their home and their church and everywhere else because they're not completely cold but they're not on fire for God. And because they are miserably weak, uh, uh, miserably lukewarm, they make everybody miserable about them. I I wish that you were not lukewarm, he says. Either be hot or cold, but whatever you do, don't be lukewarm. I've had, I've had a lot of people talk about preacher's kids, and I, I, I joke around about preacher's kids a lot. But one thing I've noticed with a lot of preacher's kids, you, you won't see a lot of lukewarm preacher's kids. Either they're, either they're cold or they're hot because they've seen too much, too much hypocrisy that's taken place in churches and, and, and growing up in, in, in churches. And they say, I, I, either I'm going to live it or I'm not going to live it. God wants you not to be lukewarm. Did you take your temperature? Did you ask God, where am I? And of course, uh, the best temperature it can be found in Luke 24, 32. Piping hot. Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road? And open the scriptures to us. Our hearts are burning. Oh, I want to be on fire, hot for God. Somebody said one time, Andy, how can you? I, I, I wish I could live in this Andy world. They called the co worker I had to call me the, called it the Andy world. I says, you know, I. I I don't apologize for my faith. I don't apologize for being positive all the time. I I don't be, I I want to be on fire for God. I'm not saying I'm always, I have always been. And sometimes I, 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 my temperature, I have to take my temperature every now and then to see where I'm at, but oh, to be on fire, to be, to be not war, not be lukewarm. Not icy cold, but on fire for God. You know, there's a lot of reasons I'm on fire for God. And and some of you, some of you heard me tell it. Maybe I've told it in interviews and talked before about about the urgency to be on fire for God. You know, as I grow older, I realize that you know, there's times limited. Uh, the Lord may come back in the next 20 or 30 years, but I'm pretty sure he's coming back for me in the next 20 or 30 years. You know, I, I'm at stage of my life where, uh, you know, if I, if I have 30 years, then, and that's great. And more than that is wonderful. But I, I want, I want to, to leave this world on fire. I want the enemy to say, I am so glad this dude is gone. He's caused me nothing but trouble. I want to be on fire for God. Unashamed on fire for God. So take your temperature. Get the thermometer. Stick it under your tongue. 
or wherever and and figure out what's your temperature are you icy cold are you miserably lukewarm are you piping hot hey i want to give a shout out to my pastor andy mead for this outline thank you just wanted to give credit where credit's due Hey, thank you for joining us for Morning Moments. Pass this message on to somebody else. Morning Moments messages will keep coming. And and uh, you keep passing it on. You keep coming back. May God richly bless you. Mm-hmm.